Hi, my name is um, Katya. I'm co-founder and CEO at Setka, and I'd like to share our experience integrating our WordPress plugin with AMP. And I hope our learnings will be helpful for anyone who is working on a similar project. So Setka Editor is a 100% what you see is what you get tool to design long form editorial content at scale. Uh, we are a WordPress VIP technology partner and Setka Editor is Gutenberg ready. Uh, within Gutenberg we work uh, as a block and everything we've um, been doing with AMP works within Gutenberg the same way it works um, without Gutenberg. Um, so to integrate, to, to uh, make Setka Editor generated content AMP ready, we've integrated with AMP for WordPress plugin. And uh, this pie chart illustrates uh, how little we had to build on top of the inbuilt functionality. It's a great infrastructure um, created by uh, XWP team and multiple uh, contributors from um, many other companies supported by Google and Automatic. We started testing uh, from the version 0 0.7, but our release was built on the version 1.0 beta and 1.0 RC. We worked only with um, paired and native modes in there. And I want to kick off with uh, a real short um, case study to illustrate um, how it worked. So this is uh, Real-Time Board's blog. Real-Time Board is a great tool for uh, mind maps and visual team collaboration. They have a pretty cool WordPress-based blog where they publish customer stories, interviews, um, different um, articles on distributed teamwork and collaboration. And uh, for this blog, uh, we um, created a kind of, it, it's an integration of um, Setka Editor and AMP for WordPress plugin that is done in paired mode. This video shows um, how it worked out. So as a result, um, the average uh, first meaningful uh, pain time uh, was reduced from 7.2 seconds to um, 1.9 seconds, which was pretty good. And now we are working for this particular project to bring it to native mode as well. But this one is uh, in paired mode. So to um, get the content that Setka Editor generates AMP ready, we've built a number of sanitizers and leverage uh, the inbuilt sanitizers, including tree shaking. And we've worked uh, within three major fields. Uh, the first was around um, transforming our uh, custom design elements into AMP components and working with anything interaction related uh, the second area was around uh, CSS file size optimization. And the third was not actually connected with our plugin per se. It, we've helped our clients to uh, optimize their themes to get it um, to be AMP ready and to optimize it further. We had to help our clients on that because sometimes it was challenging. So let's start with uh, JavaScript. Um, I guess everyone in the room knows that AMP has restrictions around um, JavaScript, um, except for the JavaScript that comes from uh, AMP CDNs. And, um, but thankfully, there is a vast library of different components that uh, fit any you know, possible need. There are buttons, there are drop downs, and um, um, a lot of other things. So uh, we needed to transform our custom design elements into um, components. Uh, for instance, uh, we've uh, took our, we created a gallery sanitizer that uh, took uh, a sequence of images, uh, a gallery, and transformed it into a relevant uh, AMP component, AMP carousel. But I guess the, the most curious part, part of the project was around animations, because animations within our plugin are defined by a user, so user Users could create um, various animations. There could be multiple animations on the page. Uh, they could um, have animations that are dependent on different user actions. Um, so to work with that, we've um, created an animation sanitizer that is transforming uh, any animation that user creates into 
amp animation. Um, so the second area uh, was um, around optimization of amp custom inline style block that uh, is supposed to be um, below 50 kilobytes of size. And um, this um, kind of uh, the tree shaking feature helps enormously with that, uh, helping to um, reduce um, size by um, finding all the styles that are not being in use and uh, removing them. Um, and uh, while working on that, we also noticed that uh, after uh, removal of the relevant uh, CSS rules for the page, there are empty media queries that are in there and they could be um, around four to five kilobytes of size. And if you remove them, nothing really happens. So this was um, the idea um, that uh, led us to send in a pull request and hopefully uh, this feature might be um, a part of the upcoming version of the next version because it helps to save additional um, size within CSS. Um, for the native mode um, that I mentioned earlier, uh, we use CSS grid technology that helps us to uh, support the feature um, where we allow grid-based layouts within the editor. And um, the third part, as I mentioned, is the theme itself. Um, being a plugin, we uh, are not anyhow interconnected with the theme, but theme is supposed to be amp ready. I'm not going to um, share any basic steps that you should take to get the theme amp ready. I just wanted to share some observations, a um, couple of things we noticed when we were looking at different themes. So th first thing we noticed is that sometimes themes do not have optimal CSS code. Um, there, are, there is duplicate code, um, long selector names, all that could be optimized uh, to save uh, space. Um, there are prefixes for old browser versions that are not necessary for the browser versions that um, are supported by AMP. So this is also a room for optimization right here. Um, base64 images, uh, I'm not saying that that's, it's, a, it's a bad thing or something, but, um, and it depends on the number of images, but this is definitely something that could also save some additional um, space. And uh, also what we've noticed is that um, not some people are not using modern optimal uh, CSS layout properties like Flexbox or um, CSS Grid that I mentioned earlier. Uh, again, while those features are supported by browser versions that are supported by AMP, so it's definitely something to consider. Um, so that's, I guess, it. Thank you very much.